What we're going to be going over here is a learning or experience curve and it's going to be based on the cumulative average model or the rights model. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply this uh, learning curve here to a problem that we're going to have here. So we're going to have this learning curve here and uh, I'm going to start out here looking at just our, our average time on a per unit basis here. And then we have those number of units produced here on our x-axis. Y-axis is our average time per unit here. So what we have to do here, we're going to have produced eight units here of a product. And we're going to have to determine what the cost is for 10 additional units that we're going to produce. So we're going to have produced eight units here. And we want to know what our cost here when we get up to 18 units here. So with this learning curve, you can understand here that as you gain experience, you're going to have reduced your average time on a per unit basis. So you're going to reduce your cost. So we have to determine what that cost is for these 10 additional units from based on the eight that we've already produced and the uh, when we want to produce 10 additional units and get up to 18 different units. So we're going to be looking at two different uh, calculations here. We're going to look at our average uh, time per unit basis and then we're going to look at our total time here. Okay, so let's first go and understand our function here for this learning curve here. And it's going to be based on an 80% learning rate here and a 20% improvement rate. And our formula we're going to deal with is going to be our Y, our average time here is going to equal A. And that's going to be the uh, cost of our first unit. We're going to be based on, on 100 here. And X is going to be the number of units that we produced raised to the power of B here. So that's what we're going to be dealing with. Okay, so let's go over and let's do our calculations. Okay, again, assume that we've produced eight units here. So how much will it cost to produce 10 additional units? So that's what we have to work with. So what we're going to start with here is just develop our equation here. So for the accumulative average learning model, we'll look at our total time here. That's going to be X units times our per unit cost here. And that equals A here. And X, let's understand that. Our Y, that's our cumulative average time here on a per unit basis. And X here, that's a cumulative number of units that we've, we're going to produce here. And then A, that would be the A, this A in green here. That's the time or cost required to produce the first unit here. And that's going to be based on 100 that we're going to be looking at. And then... Uh, well, we've got X here, that accumulative average time and a cost per unit here. It's raised to the power of B here. I did it defined here as B2. And that's really how you define B2 to determine the total units here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our, our B2 here. So what that is really here is it's going to, the general equation is this here. It's one B2 here for our cumulative total time is one minus the uh, uh, B rate, a B amount here. That's our learning function here. That's be our log of our learning rate divided by the log of base two here. So B2, one minus B here. And that is a B here is that, that's our learning curve here, that log of the learning rate divided by log here of base two. So what we do here for B2, all we do is take one minus again, the log of our learning rate, that's 0.80, an 80% learning rate here, divided by the log of base two. and what that's going to give us here when we do that arithmetic here, we're going to have for our log base 2 raised to x here, or our learning rate here, 0 0.80, that equals minus uh, 0.3219 or minus 3, 0.322 here, rounded off. So uh, subtracting that here from a unit of 1, we're going to get our B2 uh, equation here, to, or B2 amount to be 0.67 eight here. Okay, so we could work off that using our B2 amount here in our equation, we could go and calculate our cost here. But before we do that, let's go understand how we got to this B2 here and are just looking at it be our normal uh, exponent here. Okay, so let's go down and look, let's look at that. So if the first unit A required 100 hours, let's, that's what we work with here. So then for, on a per unit time here, Y, per unit time would be 100, A, 100 times X. That would be the number of units that we're looking at raised to that power here, point, minus point 0.322. So that again was that learning rate here for our B here in that equation. That's just taking our log here of 0 0.80. That's the 80% learning rate divided by the log here of 0.20. And that's gonna give us minus point 
three, two, two here. So that's for our individual time here and individual units, but we want to look for the cumulative total hours or cost here. And, and we're basing everything on hours here for our equations here. So our cumulative total cost is going to be X, the number of units we're looking at times our individual amount here, Y, and that's going to equal X times what we had here for our function, 100 for our uh, cost of our first unit times X here. That was our function that we're working with, raised to the power of minus 3.22 based on our learning rate that we're looking at. Okay, so what we want to do is uh, look at it this way. Since x here times x uh, raised to the power of b, x here times x raised to the power of b, which is this minus 3.22, that really equals x, uh, equals x plus raised to the power of 1 plus b. So you just take the exponent of x1 here, add that to the x raised to the power of b, so you get your uh, uh, function here to b or your exponent to be 1 plus b. So x our unit here, number of units times y, our per unit cost here, is going to equal a, the cost of the first to build the first unit, times x here that we're looking at, raised to the power of 1 plus b. So again, our, based on the fact that we've solved for b here, based on that 80% learning rate here, our cumulative total labor hours are going to be x times y here, or 100, based on our equation here, uh, 100 for cost of the first unit times x, whatever work, x number we're working with, uh, raised to the power of 1 minus 3.22, and that equals 100 times x to the 0.678. So that's how we got to uh, our 0.678 that we're going to deal with for our cumulative total hours, and that's what we're going to work with. Just to understand here, we first had to figure out what our uh, exponent would have been what we were raised our uh, determined based on just the individual amount and that would have been based on our learning rate here divided by our log here of a learning rate here of 80 percent or 0.8 divided by the log here of 2.0 that gave us that amount and then based on our arithmetic here we were able to derive the cumulative total labor hours based on x times y in giving us that amount here where we one minus our 0.322 here give us the 6.78 so that's how we got to that point Okay, so now just looking at our, going up here and looking at our, so for 80% learning rate, 20%, 20% improvement rate, our hours for the first eight, x times y here, that equals 100, uh, cost of the first unit here times eight units. That we had eight units here, that was the eight units. Raised to that power, 0.678, that's going to give us 409 hours here for the first eight units that we had to uh costing for our first eight units. Now we have to know the next 10 units. So all what we do is take our hours for the first 18, that's x, y, or 100 here, cost of the first unit, to 18. We're looking at 18 units here, raised to 0.678. That gives us 709 hours. So those are our total hours. So we subtract our first eight hours here, at first eight units, excuse me, those 409 hours from the hours here for the next 18 of 709. That get, so the hours for our 10 additional units is be 300 here. So let's just say, for example, uh, okay, 10 additional units, that uh, it would take extra 300 hours here based on our calculations. And just say you have our direct labor and our overhead, say it's at $50 per hour. So just take $50 per hour times those hours here for 10 additional units of 300. So our total cost for 10 additional units is going to be $15,000. Okay, so that's how we go through this calculation here. So let's go and let's look at it on, in terms of our graph here. So we're going back to our average time here on a per unit basis. We could just work off this graph but, and to come up with our solution here. But what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, determine our average time per unit here. And then we'll go down and look at our other graph and how we've done that. So if we put it into our equation here, y equals ax, uh, a times x raised to the power of b, which was that negative 3.22 for our average unit time here. We At 8 units, we'd have come up with average time is 51 point two hours here for eight units. That's the average time based on our learning curve. We started out here at 100, and each time we uh, double our output here, our, our cost here, our average time is gonna be reduced by 20%. Okay, so we've got down here for eight units, putting into our equation here, we got a 51.2 hours, and if we have 18 units, our average time here is gonna be 39.4 hours for so that's those 10 additional units. So that's just looking at our unit basis and to determine our total cost, all we do is take 
whatever units we have, time, in this case, 8 times 51.2, and that's going to give us our total hours here. And the same for our, eight, our 18 units. Just take 18 times the uh, per, per average time per unit here, 39.4, and that's going to give you your solution here. But we're going to go down and we'll look at it in our other graph here. But just to make a point here on that average time, just to move over here, why that was our average time per unit equals A, the cost of the first unit. We're saying that we're starting out at 100 here, or 100%, you can say that. But whatever your cost is for this first unit, that's your cost of the first unit times X, whatever units you're, a number of units you're looking at here, those X number of units down below here, raised to the power of B. And that B, remember, was the log here of our learning rate, 0 0.80, divided by the log here, 2.0 equals negative 3.22. Okay, so that's for Y, our average time per unit. And we could just take the number of units here times our average time per unit and just make that comparison here to determine the 10 additional units, which we already did arithmetic-wise. But let's go down here and let's look at our other graph here. Okay, again, our other graph here is our total time in hours here. And that was x times y here. And I've really got two lines showing on both of these graphs. This green line was based on a 90% learning rate, which we didn't work at with here. But we're working with the 80% learning rate, and it gives you this line over here. Okay, so for our, our cost here for our units, for eight units, remember we came up with 409 here for that value? That's simply, we could put it into our formula here, x times y or x number of units times our y per unit cost here, x times y equals a, that was the cost of the first unit here, times x, whatever units we're working with, raised to the power of b2. And I said that b2, we calculated that to be 1 minus 0.322, which was 0.678. But if we put that into our formula here for 8 units, x equal to 8 here, the power here of B2 equal to 0.678, we come up with 409 here. And that's what we did up on our graph. Had we used our, up on our graph, I mean up on our average per time unit here, the first graph we looked at it was 51.2 hours here for eight units here, times eight units that we have here, 409. 409. Okay, so that's what we came up with. So we could have worked off our first graph, but this is our looking at our total time here. So those are the total time here to produce those eight units is 409 hours here based on this 80-20% or 80% learning curve here. And then for our 18 units here, what do we have here? We had 709. That's just taking the uh, average per unit time that we calculated up above here, 39.4 times 18 units and that gives us 709. And if you just look at it, whoop, I got it kind of scrunched up here. Just the, our total unit cost was at 709 here, less our 409 over here. That gives us our 300 extra hours that we have for the additional units, okay? So that's really what you're looking at. We looked at those 300 hours and just say, whatever dollar amount per hour you're looking at, we had $50 per hour for labor and overhead, and that came up to $15,000. Okay, so what you really have to know here is A, your first, your unit, the unit cost here, or the number of hours that we have for the first unit, and we just said that was set to 100. We had uh, our X, those were the number of units, and then we had to determine what we raised those number of units to, that power here, and that was B2, 1 minus what we have here at, based on that, the B1 amount here. Okay, so that's how we came up with our solution here. You, again, the 709 you could figure out just by putting uh, the 18 into X here into 18 and raising it to that power times 100. That give, would give us the 709. I just went up above here and just looked at it on an average per unit basis here. That was for it, this total time here is just taking X, whatever you have here, uh, for, that you determine on an average time per unit here, times whatever number of units you're looking at. In this case, it was 18, nine, 18 units here, and our average time was 39.4, which gave us 709 total hours here. That was all based on hours. And for our 409, that was just taking that average time per unit, 51.2 times 8 units here, 409. So... Based on our learning curve here, we're able to determine the fact that we have 300 additional hours that we have to pay for if we're going to build the additional 10 units that we're looking at. And just one other thing here, if we go and look at our graph here, just to understand uh, our function here, that xy, that was our total time here in hours, equals a, and that was the for a unit a cost of the first unit. Uh, 
times x, whatever units we're looking at. And that was 1 plus our b. That's how we got to our b was what? 1 plus b was one unit 1 here, and we had to add to it the b amount, but the b amount was a negative 0.322, so uh, subtract that from one unit of 1 here, and that gave us, that's how we got that 0.678 here. So that's is, this 0.678 here is for our total time, our, our exponent that we raise our number of units to uh, based on total hours. And that's how we worked that arithmetic out. And you can see it here, 1 minus what we calculated here for log, log here, 0 0.80 or the 80% learning rate divided by the log here, base 2. And that amount here was negative 3.2. 219 actually. Subtract that from 1 and you're going to get your uh, exponent here based on the cumulative total amount here, 0.678. Okay, we went through this all here just to see and we applied it to our general equation here. We looked at it on a per unit basis for the average time on a per unit basis and we looked at it based on total time here. Okay, so that's pretty much how you'd go through this problem here and you're able to do it with this cumulative average amount because you really got a constant rate of increase in your total hours here and you also have a constant uh, decrease in your average time per unit. Okay, so that'll summarize our discussion here on how we applied uh, using this learning experience uh, curve here using the cumulative average model here to determine how much it would cost to build an additional certain number of units after we had a, a certain amount of experience based on our learning curve.